The future of spirituality is terrestrial and corporeal because the cosmos has been mapped already over the last few millennia. From the post-Vedic period onward all over the world, we have gone into the cosmos. We have experienced samadhi. We know what happens. We know that when we are in samadhi, we are not in touch with the body. Or when we are in transcendental experiences, whether we are taking a chemical of some sort or long hours of meditation or anything that takes us out of the system, we know what happens. But what we don't know as yet is what happens deep down in the cellular nature of this system, in the atomic nature of this system, actually going down into the cells and laterally expanding this consciousness. <laughs> Namaskar. Say your name, please. My name is Sudama. When I'm talking to you, then I wonder what is it what is talking to you? Is that what we call that self? Or is there because I can't realize anything else than that what is talking at the moment? Um, and I guess when you are talking, uh, is it the same what is talking? I'm going to uh, take you away from the Neo-Advaitin approach and simplify this whole um, existential question, of, mm. basically, of who am I, down to the body, this Sudama, is the name given to this body, this conglomeration of cells that form this body, these organs, these, uh, the skin, the blood. And we call that Sudama. The soul, the self, is an independent entity because it does not come with intention or purpose. It does not exhibit the qualities that are associated with Sudama's will, Sudama's intent, Sudama's purpose. So when you are speaking to me, to reduce it down to its essence, it is actually this body that is speaking. This body is what? It is this body called Sudama that is speaking. Mm -hmm. And we keep the, uh, the identity of this body down to the minimum. So, Sudama, what is your mother's name? Uh, the, the your mother. Um, what is her name? You truly asked me, I would say her name is Ananda Maima, but uh, if you talk to this <laughs> body, then it's a given thing. The body's mother. My, my body's mother? Her name is Inge. Inge. Mm -hmm. And where were you born, Sudama? This body was born in 1953. No, where? Huh? Where? Where? In Germany. So, Sudama, son of Inge, mm -hmm. from which city in Germany? Where? Near Frankfurt. So, Sudama, son of Inge, from near Frankfurt, and that maintains that very slim identity for this body. So, when you ask me, who is it that's speaking? It is this body that is speaking. And why I say that is because the soul itself doesn't speak. As I said, it is impulsing. It's the cosmic binary impulse that impulses the system over the years of the life of Sudama, son of Inge from Frankfurt and son of the spiritual Ma mm. of his system, Ananda Maima. So, that is a little bit already of added identity, but let's take it because we love Ananda Maima, so we add that in. It is Sudama, this thing over here that's speaking, because without this thing over here, there is no I that is speaking anyway. Who is this speaking? This is me sitting here, daughter of, from 
who is speaking. And it is the soul that is impulsing this body to say what it has to say. And when I'm in surrender to that truth, which is the Antar Guru, then what action, whatever it may be, whatever emerges from these lips, whatever emerges from this body, whatever action this body is taking is emerging from the truth. And when this body is not in surrender, then its actions are emerging from the ego. It's a simplification on that path to becoming and perfecting this whole system as an instrument of the truth. So finally, this whole thing is, is truth in action. After the, you know, deepening of the practice. So the idea that I am the soul would in this context and in this approach not really be a statement of truth. It would come from the ego because the ego is identifying with the soul, when actually the very idea of I is emerging in the thinking. And the thinking is not possible without the actual material brain, which is a bodily function. So it sort of makes you into an instrument of the truth. Mm. And the deeper you become an instrument of the truth. The more you perfect yourself as an instrument of the truth, the less there is need for any identification with anything, not even the soul. So that is the direction in which what is spoken about here goes and the practice as well. So mm. practicing basically is just surrendering to the soul mm. and learning to listen in to that almost imperceptible impulse which you knew as a child which was lost over the socialization processes and you recover this and you move into that state of surrender, samarpan, you know. You would know that word quite well, I think, so. I, I have a problem with this identification. Yes. I don't know where it starts. It happens quite often that I wake up and there's nothing. And then it takes a moment, two moments, I don't know how long, and something happens and there comes that first thought or picture and then suddenly the whole universe is there. At that moment there is no identification. It's happening within a quietness of awareness, just a movie unfolding. But my, my problem with some of it is anger. We were talking about anger a little bit yesterday and in these last two, three years I experienced a lot of Rage, I would say, anger, rage, frustration caused by circumstances which are media and experience of political events. And I was wondering whether that is triggered in a certain way to make me part of that evilness or is that evilness me? When you wake up in the morning, there is no identification mm -hmm. and that identification slowly builds. It builds through a reconnection with the memory mm. of the system. The thing is that that state when you wake up in the morning and there is not as yet the identification, that is actually the pure state of surrender mm. because the system is not listening to the ego in that moment. Mm. It is simply there and it is not in a functional state of an identified being. So that is one thing, the reason why that experience of isness is there is because there is no ego at play for those few moments. And then the ego starts to take over. And then it is a question of how much do you give in to the ego or not? This rage and frustration you speak about in the terms of the Neo-Advaitin approach, are called pictures that you either associate with or not. The thing with all of this is it's a matter of interpretation and they can be interpreted as pictures that are happening with which you either associate or you don't or they can also in very deconstructed material terms be attributed to 
actual waves, electromagnetic waves that are taking over the system, which have as much a place in a spiritual quest or in a spiritual approach as the so-called spirit does, you know? Because spirit is matter. That is what is being said here. It is all matter. And so, when your system experiences rage, to associate that rage as being something which has evolved in your system is essentially to accept ego. But if the approach is that that rage or that anger uh, is something which has taken over the system, because the system called Sudama, a very beautiful name, by the way, has lost its surrender in that moment. You cannot be angry, you cannot be in rage if you are in surrender. So the approach of the Neo-Advaitin is to attribute everything that happens as a sort of an image on a screen which you either relate to or not. But the approach taken here, the aim of which is to expand the consciousness within your system. If you don't leave, if you don't detach, if you don't consider what is happening to you to be an image, then you also realize that it's a real thing. And so you take on... You become Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. You're standing up with your bow in your hand and you're ready to to shoot down whatever it is which is standing in the way of the joyous experience which is born of surrender. So, what if you were to say that this anger that is happening, firstly, it's not me, it is something that is taking over this body and I'm going to refuse it entry. It is something which is collectively there in the atmosphere. I was speaking yesterday about how anger erupted about 20 years ago when the knowledge was manifesting. I had... Uh, I was curious about this whole anger thing because it's quite something... it's a powerful thing around all the time, you know. And what was received was that it was born out of the first and early attempts of early human beings, the rishis at that time, all around the world, to experiment with the sexual energy. And they tried to see what will happen if that sexual energy is, uh, is first suppressed, then allowed to expand, but then contracted again in the system. So they were playing with this sexual energy and trying to understand it. And through those experiments in the suppression of that sexual energy, anger was born as a phenomenon, as an emotional phenomenon in, in the collective atmosphere. So when you are getting angry, if you see that anger as something in any way connected to you, then it becomes yours. And in other words, you're bending to the ego. But if you were to say, no, this anger is entering my system, certainly one can say these are semantics, but semantics also do influence how you live your life, you know? So then you say, okay, um, I'm not going to allow this, I'm pushing it out. Because it's a face of the ego. You push it out, and suddenly you're anger-free. This system called Sudama is anger-free. The moment when that happens, it happens because there is surrender. You cannot get rid of anger in the system unless you bend and surrender for a given moment. You're bending and surrender to the, to the truth of your system, and in that moment, that anger has no place. So it's a two-way uh, sort of action. And the more you bend, the less anger in the system. The deeper you bend, the more you live in the truth, you know, the less anger in the system. So that anger being a face of ego, it's not you. It's a result of something inherited. You're German, you have inherited a nice, very colorful inheritance. But also it is the socialization process that propels that anger and there is a reason underlying that, and that is that this now applies to you from 
what I'm sensing, that there has been a lifetime of searching there. I'm finding also. And now you're sort of zoning in into actually touching the truth with your fingertips. You're sort of encircling, you know, it's like... But that thing has not happened yet. So there is a sort of a... a I wouldn't call it a rage, but a deep readiness and a tinge of almost anxiety, angst in German, I would say, that this won't happen in this lifetime. So that causes all these other things to rise. And the moment you start to zone in on the truth, on the Antar Guru, on the Antar Atman, you're suddenly going to lose all of that anger and rage. It will fall away. There's no question about it if you do the practice of tuning in, you know. And the moment you feel even a small vibration of anger, it's out, it's a no, because it is the ego in action, ahankar. So when you take up that practice, and it'll go very fast with you, because you seem to have a lifetime of, of seeking and finding behind you, so at one point you also have to find it and touch it with your fingertips, you know. And if you have spent so many years detaching, neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this. Then, of course, you're also not that. So now you have to go into surrender mode and tune in. And touch the truth with your fingertips. That's self-realization. And it is extremely near for you. You're, you're just there. That anger will fall away very fast. In fact, I don't see it so much in you. I think you're also over, like, a, you know, even a little bit of anger for you appears to be a lot more likely like that, I would say. So take up the practice and see what happens, experiment. What do I have to do or what do you have to do to do that? Technically, every time you undertake an action, in the beginning especially, of this kind of a practice, you're asking yourself, where does this action come from? Where does the urge to this action arise from? Is it arising from the truth of this system? Or is it arising from the ahankar, from the ego? And if it is arising from the ego, if you sense, mm -mm, then you cannot take that action. Then you step back, you wait. When this impulse arises, how do I tell the difference, whether it's from the truth or from the ego? It's it has a different quality and it has a material difference. And the difference is that the, that the ego's action is loud. loud. It's demanding, it's insisting, it's opinionating, it's forcing, it's pushing, it's loud. I want to do that, that's the right thing to do. Yes, yes, it's a good thing to do. I believe in that, I want that, I desire that, you know. I insist on that, that's my opinion. Then you know, uh-uh, that's the ego. But the truth impulse is, it's binary in nature. You know, people, uh, when I say the truth impulse is binary, people are like shocked because the soul and the truth and these are all these dimensionless, cosmic, uh, incense, sticky concepts. But if you move into that state of, of self-realization, which is a deepening process, it's not something final, uh, you'll start to feel a yes and a no, a yes and a no. It is pushing the system into a yes action or a no, re retracting or pushing. So you'll feel that difference very fast and if you have, you know, taken up practices, whatever they may be, over the years, that doesn't take you very long to find that difference out. It's just a shift of mode, of compass, because where you come from is from the traditional uh, Advaita teachings and they're very powerful teachings. What is spoken about here is new, and it's the future of spirituality 
the future of spirituality is terrestrial and corporeal because the cosmos has been mapped already over the last few millennia mm. from the post-Vedic period onward all over the world. We have gone into the cosmos. We have experienced samadhi. We know what happens. We know that when we are in samadhi, we are not in touch with the body. Or when we are in transcendental experiences, whether we are taking a chemical of some sort or long hours of meditation or anything that takes us out of the system. We know what happens. But what we don't know as yet is what happens deep down in the cellular nature of this system, in the atomic nature of this system, actually going down into the cells and laterally expanding this consciousness. And that's what is spoken about here. So that joyousness will increase once you start going with the truth very concretely not basing your decisions on your socialization, but on the truth impulses that come from the center of the system, the antar guru, your inner master. Mm. Finally, the duty of the guru is to show the antar guru, mm. you know. And that is what is the antar guru experience, surrender, surrender. So that would be a step, the first step. And then it automatically takes on its own sadhana. You will know what to do next and next and next. Namaskar. <laughs>